in this video i'm going to show you how to create a very simple and minimal wedding invitation like this in photoshop and this is coming up <laughs> Hi everybody, you know Sent here and welcome to the channel. Over here we make videos like this. If that is something that sounds like you're interested, kindly consider subscribing. Inside the description of this video will be a link to download the resources that I'll be using for this video. So you might consider downloading them and practicing. And in case you do and you want to show it up to me, you can send it over to Instagram or on Twitter. Now let's get into Photoshop and let's get started first of all we're going to create a new document so Control plus n to create a new document you can decide on any size that you want to use but in this case i want us to use a5 so we go to print and then we are going to locate a5 the orientation is going to be portrait and then the resolution is going to be 300 after you set that you go ahead and then you click create this is supposed to be a very simple and minimal wedding invitation so we are not going to do much the first thing we're going to bring in here is a complete background so the dominant color that we are going to use is purple and then we are going to match it up with some other colors that will make the design look great so the first thing we're going to do is bring in our background to do that you go to file place embedded and then you can navigate to the place that you have your background and then you can use that I got about two backgrounds for you so you can use any one of them if you are using any other color you can download similar colors like this with that same color so you just double click on the background and then it comes in into your photoshop now we want to rotate this once you bring it in and you have the transformation controls on it you're going to right click and then you are going to rotate it as you want it so in this case i want it to go 90 clockwise that is it goes on the right side so i'll left click on rotate 90 clockwise and then it turns portrait for me what i have to do next is i'm going to transform it to fit the entire page so i can hold here the transformation controls and then i can transform it as i want it yeah so we're going to use just one background if you are using another one you can do the same thing for it the next thing we want to do is we want to create a rectangle to do that you are going to look for the rectangle tool which is right over here so the rectangle tool and then you can bring your cursor in here left click and you can drag to the side you can create any sort of or any type of rectangle that you want but we want it to sit in the middle so we can bring it somewhere around here now we want to change the color to do that you're going to double click on the layer thumbnail over here or you can use the fill over here to also set it but in most cases you're not going to have this so let's focus on the layer thumbnail you're going to double click on that and then you're going to change your color to white so you can left click and hold and you drag it till you find white and you can click ok now we want this rectangle to sit in the middle by all angles so what we can do is we can press ctrl a to make a selection and then we can go on top here and we are going to align horizontal centers and then align vertical centers in this case this rectangle is sitting in the middle you can see the whitish part is kind of messing up or blending with the background so we can right click on this rectangle go to blend options and then we can add a drop shadow to it so you add a drop shadow like that and you have your controls over here you can increase the size to any size that you want so the more you increase it the more the shadows comes around it and you can as well play with the opacity the more you increase it the higher it becomes and if you decrease it too but you don't have to make it that very deep so this settings should be fine for us and then you can go ahead and click ok now once we have this we can then bring in our other flora flowers so we go into the resource again so file and then place embedded and then that too i got two of them for you so it depends on how you want to use it so i made use of this particular one over here you can bring it in and just like we rotated the first flower you can right click on this and then you can also rotate it 90 clockwise it depends on how you want it now we want this to fit inside of the rectangle that we created so we just open it up like that and then you can open this side also like so so something like this should be fine if you zoom in clearly here you can see that this is not that very white so we want to make it a bit white so that it blends with the background so what we can do is we can right click over here and rasterize let me just rename this because it looks very long for me so flower 2 and then this is going to be flower 
one okay so we are on flower two currently we are just going to press ctrl l to activate the levels and then we can drag it from the right side to the left side so that the whites can appear some more so we have something like this and we can click on ok now this looks very big for us because you are going to put information over here so we need to split this flower so that we can press it up a bit or transform it a bit to do that we are going to use the polygonal lasso tool so you pick your polygonal lasso tool and then you can cut it from here you make sure that none of the flowers are in there so we can cut around this area like that when you get here then you can right click and go to layer via cut so once you cut that you see that you're going to have two different flowers now you can pick your move tool and you realize that this one is separate the top one and the down one is also separate so we can pick the top one press ctrl t and then we can transform it slightly like that and then we can pick the down one to ctrl t and then we can transform it also slightly like that but you realize that from here it has gone over the rectangle so what we can do here is that we go to flower two we right click and then we are going to create a clipping mask we can do the same for flower one right click and create clipping mask in this case even if we move flower one up here it is not going to go outside of the rectangle that we created let's undo that so we can press ctrl t and transform it some more and then we are going to bring in flower one up a little bit as well on the other hand we can also decide to flip this or we can just interchange it we just send this on top here and you're just going to bring this down here let's do that and see how it works and then flower two we're going to also rotate that to 180 and it's going to go on top here i think this looks way better for me so i can transform this slightly like that and we are good to go now it's time to add the test we're going very minimal so the first one is going to be together with their family the font that we're going to use is poppins and we are going to use poppins medium so you're going to put your test over there and then let's make sure that it is centered you can press ctrl t to transform it a little bit like that poppins isn't really looking good for me so let's change this to railway so i'll leave links to download all these fonts also in the description so railway should work better for me this is fine so you press ctrl t and then you can transform it slightly like this press ctrl a and make sure that it is centered now we right click on this test go to the blending options and then you can add a gradient to it you select your gradient and then you can add any gradient now the gradient has to match with the colors that you are using so in this case i just went for this particular colors over here so this is the first hex code if you want to use that and then this is going to be the second hex code once you're done you go ahead you click ok ok and then ok the next test is going to be the names of the people getting married so in this case we have prosper and olivia so we're going to choose our test tool and then we are going to type prosper here the font that we are going to use for this particular one is going to be edwardian script itc links to download it will be in the description so you can press ctrl t transform that to be very bigger as well and in this case you are going to maintain the original color that we are using that is the purple so you press ctrl a and then you can center it as well so we are using the horizontal centers so that it, be, it comes in the middle we can then make a duplicate of ctrl j and then drag it down over here and we are going to change that to the name of the lady so that is going to be olivia in between them we are going to make one more duplicate and drag it over here and we are going to type the end sign so the edwardian script wouldn't allow us to do that so we're going to just change this to poppings and probably bold or medium should be fine as well you press ctrl t to transform it and then you can bring it slightly over here so prosper and olivia that is going to be the names you can as well add the surnames and other names to it but for the sake of this tutorial let's go with their first names only 
so we're going to make a duplicate of the end sign bring it down over here and we are going to change that to humbly invite you to their wedding so you can also transform that control t and then you can transform that make sure that you press ctrl a and center it everything has to be centered okay so you can bring that also over here and the next test is going to be their wedding so humbly invite you to their wedding so you can make a duplicate one more time and change this one to wedding for the wedding font the font that we're going to use for that is called glitting and links to download it will be in the description so we change it to glitten and then we can press ctrl t transform it to make it very big because that is the center of attraction okay so we can make it very big like this press ctrl a and then we make sure that it is centered we can transform it slightly like that as well and always make sure that it is centered now we want to add a gradient overlay to it to do that you right click on the wedding layer go to blending options and then you can apply your gradient so we are going to use the same gradient that you used over here on this one but if you want to change it as well you can click on the gradient bar over here and of course give it any other color that you want so you can pick any other color these are the purple related colors or gradients you can as well use any one of these which will make it fine but of course i decided to go with this let me know your thoughts in the comment section so you click ok and then ok when you are done the next test is going to be the date time and then the venue for that you need our poppins over here make a duplicate and drag it slightly over here and then you are going to type in your time your date and then your venue so i have my time date and venue over here and i want this to be all caps so i can go to the toggle character and then select the double t over here which is all caps once you do that you can press ctrl t transform it nicely like that and then you can make sure you press ctrl a and it is centered simple as that right now i think i need to transform my flower over here a little bit so i can transform it slightly like this so that i have enough space over here to add a couple of things it can go a bit more like that and i also feel like the wedding color here it's a bit fading so let's increase it up a little bit i found a color for it so we can go back to the gradient and then we are going to choose a different gradient for it so this looks way better than the other one the other one looks like it is fading so once you apply that this is the colors in case you want to use and the actual colors for this particular wedding was purple and then pink okay so i just decided to blend in the pinks over here so it is the color the other color remains the same so you can go ahead click ok and then ok from here in between these two the wedding and the time you want to bring a separator over there so i can make a duplicate of the date time and venue double click on it to edit it and then i'm going to change my font to vintage the creatives so this is what is going to give me and the letter that we're going to so with this particular font any letter that you type is going to give you a different separator so we're going to type a letter k you just make sure that this tt the caps lock is unchecked because it has to be small letter for you to get this particular sign if it is caps lock or you have your tt on this is the sign that you are going to get so make sure your caps lock is off and your double t which is the caps is also off now you can press ctrl t and then you can transform this to make it bigger press ctrl a and then center it and then you can position it in between the wedding and then the date the time and then the venue the next information is going to be the info information so you press ctrl j to duplicate your date time and venue once again you bring it down and then you can put your info over there this can also be the rsvp anything you want but remember this we are going very minimal so you're going to paste this over there and this info is actually my number in case you want to reach out for any other thing or in case you want to reach out for me to design your invitation for you as well so we can right click on this go to the blending option and we can as well add a gradient to this so the same gradient that we added to the wedding we are adding the same gradient to this and you can click ok and the last thing is going to be another duplicate over here a duplicate of the info and then we can bring it over here 
and we're going to edit that it is going to say reception to follow so let's select all of this and make it minus 40 click ok we don't want the gradient on this so we can right click and then go to clear layer style so that all the gradients or any other effect that we added to this will be gone so we just have reception to follow over here now it is time for you to make some slight adjustments so you can push your wedding up a bit you can push the humbly invite you to their wedding also up a little bit and maybe you can just edit this one and change it from medium to semi bold so that it looks a bit bolder like that and you can push it down slightly as well and yes just like that you create a very simple minimal wedding invitation for your wedding or for a client but i hope you grasp the concept and you can use this to make your own wedding invitations or use this to design something for a client grabs inspiration from this to make something for a client i just realized that i can add the same effect on this particular one it looks good now if you did enjoy this video subscribe to the channel will be so very much appreciated and thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video i'll see you guys in the next video it's innocent here and bye